Johnny, the Angels win their second straight series over a team at 500 or better. Man, what's different about this team right now? We're going to tell you. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and now on Sirius XM by searching Locked On Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review like I Hate Frontier did recently. Johnny, I don't think that's their real name, but they did give us five stars. And those watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by the Game Time app. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Worlds. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, what, what happened around here? It's uh, <laughs> Something's different. <laughs> somebody somebody <laughs> renovated. No, if you're watching on the YouTube side, we've got a brand new look for the show across all of the Locked On Podcast Network, so we're very excited and hope that you enjoy it. Hey, we've been fans of this team for years. Halo fans who uh, have been through thick and thin with this Angels team, so we feel like we have the uh, the right and the authority to speak on this team, right, Mike? I feel Absolutely. like yeah, we've, seen, we've seen enough. It's our second season here with you at Locked On Angels, and we're very excited to talk baseball with you every single day of the week, Monday through Friday. Hey, Locked On Everydayers, don't forget that we are recapping the game against the Red Sox that takes place tonight. See if they can go for a series sweep. But on today's show, Mike, you and I have some hot takes about Shohei Otani. We felt like it was time to share those takes with our Locked On Angels listeners and viewers. But before we get to that, let's recap game two against the Red Sox from last night. What a fun game, Johnny. Angels win 4-0. Yes. And Griffin Canning follows Jaime Berea and pitches spec spectacularly and Absolutely. he looked incredible looked confident looked like an ace right looked like the griffin canning that we were hoping for he went seven innings two hits no runs three walks and five k's and he just looked like he had it all working and it was fun to watch him pitch and it was fun to watch him dominate and then it was fun to watch the offense come through johnny it started quickly mickey moniak Hits Who else? His, his, a leadoff home run for Mickey Moniak. It's his yeah. third leadoff home run this season, his fourth in 10 games. Oh, you know, just showing off, just flexing. Casual. And he's he's just a different player than what he was with the Phillies and even what he was last year. They were talking on the video side, on the TV side, about what's different. And, of course, Gooby has all of the answers. He said Mickey is staying back. He's keeping his hips back. He's not opening up too fast. He's got a more open stance so that he can see the ball. And he's really balanced. And his timing is is just perfect right now with that stance. And so it's great to see Mickey actually come through, drive the ball. His hands are quiet. And I love that he's performing and performing really well for us. And so high five to Mickey Moniak. And how about Matt Theis and Mike Trout, Johnny? They I looked know. good last night too. Yeah, it was great to see Theis go oppo with that home run. That was strong, huge. Yeah, yeah. He went to left center field. He's a lefty, mind you. So rather than flex that pull power, he went opposite field into the rock pile. Mike Trout also hits one out and adds on some insurance runs in the eighth inning, which were much needed. It allowed Jacob Webb to come in and finish the game, Mike. There was a moment there, and, and maybe this is indicative of the kind of team the Angels are becoming because we're asking the question, what's changed with this team right? Yeah, over yeah. the last couple of series? One of those is you saw Jacob Webb was amped up. It's his first time out with the big league club as a relief pitcher this season. Obviously, he doesn't want to mess up. He doesn't want to screw up. He wants to go out there and get a clean inning. And he comes out and he's hyped up and he throws those two fastballs above the zone. What does yeah. Matt Theis do? He walks out there. He has a conversation with him. Tells him, hey, man, it's all good. Just throw your fastball. Don't overthrow it. Yeah, let's just be in this moment here, right? Veteran move on yep. Matt Theis's part. Yep. And for as much grief as we had given him earlier in the season, he looks like a completely different catcher john he looks like a major league catcher and, yeah. and we're not just talking offensively i get that that's why he's in there because of his bat 
but Johnny, he looks like he knows what he's doing behind the plate. And that's what we were nervous about when Logan Ohapi went down is mm-hmm. when we have a, a, a catcher back there that would really be able to handle this pitching staff. And it's why we called for Chad Wallach because Chad Wallach mm-hmm. is that type of guy. He can handle it. He's a veteran. But now Wallach can back up Thais and he's a pretty solid backup, but Thais is an incredible starter for us. And he looks like he's more comfortable behind the plate. So once again, can I just give all apologies to Matt Thice? Thank you for (laughs) proving me wrong because he has been playing so well for us for a long period of time. Now, let me also say that the defense has been tremendous. There was a play where Gio Urshela got to the ball down the third baseline and from the outfield grass, Mike, he throws it all the way across the diamond through a dart. Normally, normally you're like, Oh, I'm a little bit nervous, but you had Jared Walsh on the other side of that. Yeah. They, they, they made some big plays. They turned some big double plays in this one. The team looked really good out there, Mike. And I think defense is the key to a lot of these things changing for the halos, but that's not even to mention the pitching and yeah. for Griffin canning who went seven innings pitched two hits. And those two hits were the only hits the Red Sox had all game long. In fact, Matt Moore gave up a walk, but then immediately got that double play. And then, of course, Jacob Webb also went out there and did a great job as well. He uh, Griffin Canning struggled with the two out, like finishing the inning, right? Yes. So he had, yeah. he had those, those three walks. But at the same time, I was worried about how efficient he was going to be because in the third inning, he was at about 50 pitches, right? but he ended up finishing the game with just 91 pitches going through seven innings. Mike, pitch efficiency is what makes a difference in this game, especially for the Halos. These guys who go out there and throw a ton of pitches, you're, you're exhausted by the fourth inning. I hope that the Angels can move past that. Jaime Berea was a great example of doing that right. I think he had something like 64 pitches through five. Through yeah. the five innings, he was allowed to pitch, right? Right. So all that to say, if these guys can continue to pitch effectively and and efficiently, I think we're going to have a lot of success. Yeah, a lot of youthful energy on this team. And and I love that Neto's bringing that energy. I love that we have Griffin Canning on the mound. And, and I love Jacob Webb just getting fired up out on the mound as well. And, of course, having Jared Walsh back. And this team right now, Johnny, is 27 and 23. They have the same record they did over 50 games last season. Mm -hmm. And there were some people on Twitter saying, well, you know, Joe Madden had this team at 27 and 17, and it was (laughs) a different team last year than this year. Well, now we're at equal records. And last year at this time, we were in the midst of a 14-game losing streak. Right. This year, we're in the midst of a three-game winning streak with the potential of sweeping the Red Sox at home. And and so far, going, what, 5-1 and on this homestand. Man, this has just been a turning point for this team. And I love that Perry Manassian and his team and Phil Nevin and his coaching staff are figuring out who needs to go in where, what players need need to be where they are. And it seems like it took a bit, but it seems like they're starting to find their groove. I don't want to jinx it, but it seems like they're starting to find their groove. (laughs) Hey, well, the Angels play the Red Sox tonight at 638 Pacific time. It's Tyler Anderson versus James Paxton. Paxton's kind of found it again, Mike, with the Red Sox this season. It's incredible. Yeah. Moniak is one for 24 with 12 Ks and zero walks in his MLB career versus left-handed pitching this year at triple a, he had a 217 average with a 554 OPS. So I'm sure that we'll see Taylor Ward yeah. start in this one, which makes sense. In fact, you can catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search angels coming up on locked on angels. I'm going to give you my Shohei Otani hot take hot. Hot take, hot take. Hey, Locked On Angels is brought to you by Rocket Money. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forget about, and chances are you're one of the 80%. Like the Stars app that you wanted to watch that one show that one time, or that free gaming trial that you wanted to play but never actually used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you, and for you they'll they'll do it for free which is which is so great you can just hit cancel and rocket money will take care of it it's that easy rocket money also helps you manage your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off 
Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money so far this year, and they're saving an average of $720 every year, which is fantastic. So you need that money back in your pocket, back in your bank account, back in your Venmo, whatever you use. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB to get started. Again, that's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. Don't forget that the Angels play the Red Sox tonight, 6.38 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels, and you might even hear our little voices during a commercial break if you listen to the Halos on the SXM app. So check it out if you can. All right, it's time. Johnny, you're going to take this segment and give us your hot take on hot Shohei take. Otani. And then I'm going to go in segment three and give my hot take on Shohei Otani. And mine actually follows yours up. So we wanted to use oh. your hot take first because okay. I actually, I'm actually excited about your hot take. So ready, set, go. Mike, let's set the stage here. We've already had some conversation about Shohei Otani and where he's going to end up next season. A lot of teams think that, you know, the Mets will throw the money at him. They'll back up the Brinks truck and try to get him out to the East Coast. So a lot of people are saying the Dodgers are going to be in on him and the San Diego Padres. There's even been some trade rumors that Jeff Fletcher shut down on Twitter, which I appreciated. And he said, if there's going to be any trade rumors around Otani, it's not just going to be from one team it's going to be 10 teams. And right. I love that Jeff Fletcher right. had that to say, Mike, here's the thing. As I thought about my Shohei Otani hot take, I thought about the amount of money that he's going to get, whether it's with the angels or another team, Otani is going to be set for the rest of his life. Now right. that's not the hot take. Okay. Yeah. That's just a fact of life. That's a take. take. <laughs> <laughs> that's a take, take. But I look at the Mets and I look at the Padres and I look at where they're sitting right now. And I look at where, where the Angels are sitting right now. Yes, we got off to a rocky start. Yes, there were some decisions and managing decisions that didn't quite make sense to us a lot in April, right? There was a lot of that nonsense back then. I look at the Mets and how much they've spent on their roster. Yeah. I look at the Padres and all the superstars they brought in. Right. To make that team happen. It's an all-star team. It's an all-star team. But Mike, if you don't have cohesiveness, if you don't have relationships, and if you don't have a connection with the people that you're playing with, then you're going to end up like San Diego. Yeah. You're going to end up like the Mets. Yep. You're going to bring in guys who have a proven track record, but are north of 40, no offense to you, uh, like Verlander and Scherzer. I had to get that dig in there. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. It, 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 you, you have to have cohesiveness and you have to have a connectedness with your teammates. Yeah. And everything you see about Shohei Otani is about how much he loves his team and how much he loves his teammates. Now, Mike, let's say for the sake of argument that the Angels get to the playoffs. That would be a win, especially after how long it's been. Right? Yeah. It'll have been nine years by the time the end of the season comes around. And we want to see them get into the playoffs. Now, let's say they get there and they succeed. Fantastic. We're happy. Everybody can go home happy. If they get there and they don't make it, here's my Otani hot take. Okay, I'm ready. I think Shohei Otani is going to stay with the Angels because Shohei Otani is going to wear the responsibility of getting the Angels to the playoffs and succeeding in the playoffs on his shoulders. Hmm. That's my take. Okay. And now I'm going to elaborate because I can already hear people click, 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 click on their keyboard. <laughs> what are you talking about? He does yeah. everything. Yes. L let me, l let me give a helpful hint. Okay. Wait until John's done before you leave a comment. <laughs> Torrid from New York. Wait until John's done <laughs> until you leave a comment. I love Torrid because he just blows up our comments with great thoughts. So wait yeah. until John's done. Yes. And then you can tell him if he's ridiculous or if you agree. John, continue. Right. <laughs> Mike, if anybody takes responsibility for their own performance, it's Shohei Otani. Mm. Recently, after a game, they were talking about how he was pitching and he was able to help himself out with a hit in order 
to add on to the score and whatnot to help himself out on the mound. Here's the quote. I think I've experienced everything. So it's good that I was able to get a good hit by myself to change the score in a game like this. Pitching is dot, dot, dot. I have a lot to learn. Hmm. If you think you can still get better, it's a plus. The reason why I think that's important is because Shohei Otani is the one who always believes that he can get better. Think about everything crazy we've seen him do, especially in 2021, 2022, and this year. He still feels like he has room to grow. And when the Angels don't succeed, and maybe they lose a game, Otani always takes the responsibility and bears that weight. And he says, yeah. you know what? I really wish that I could have pitched better. I really wish that I could have hit better in that situation. I really wish that I could have gotten a hit there instead of a strikeout. I think Otani is going to want to be the one to take the Angels to the playoffs. Mm. And I think he's going to re-sign because he will hold himself personally responsible because he takes that responsibility. Nobody, Nobody's putting that on him, right? Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah, if, if you watch an Angels game, Otani's the last person that you're going to go, well, well, Otani didn't pull his weight. He's the last person that you're going to criticize. Yeah. Except Otani does it to himself. Yeah. And I think that he's going to bear the weight of responsibility of getting the Angels to the playoffs. So much so that if they don't succeed this year, he's going to look around at the teammates. He knows the teammates he loves. He's going to look around at the up and coming roster who has been drafted over the last few years and are succeeding like Ohapi and Neto and Moniac, those guys. And he's going to see, you know what? There's a bright future here. And I have unfinished business in Anaheim. So I'm confident that when the time comes, everybody's going to say he's going here, he's going there, he's going up the five to Los Angeles. I have a feeling that he'll stay right here because he wants to, you know, to Cody Rhodes it from WWE. He wants to finish the story, <laughs> right? Yep. He wants to bear the weight of responsibility and bear the weight of the success of the Halos. And again, Otani is the only one who holds Otani responsible for any of his shortcomings. You and I and nobody else has any room to say anything about Shohei Otani's shortcomings except for Otani. Yeah. I think that if the Angels don't get there, he'll take it personally. He'll consider it a personal goal of his to get this team from Anaheim, California to the playoffs. What do you think? I love it. And here, here's a few reasons why I love it. It's, it's not an emotional hot take. I know that there's emotion involved, but it's not an emotional hot take. And what I mean by that is it's not a typical – Angels Twitter fan, Angels Facebook fan, Angels social mm. media fan that says, oh man, the Angels can't win anything. Trade Otani, get rid of him, do this and do that, <laughs> right? Like, because we've, how many times have we seen that and heard that conversation over the last month and a half as the Angels have tried to figure out where they're at this season? Now yes. all those people are going to go, wait a second, they're 27 and 23. We shouldn't trade him hmm. and we shouldn't get rid of him. And I think he might come back. And so I, I think that that's the first piece that I like about this. The second piece is that most people who think Otani is going to the Dodgers, the Padres, or the Mets are Dodgers, Padres, and Mets fans. Mm -hmm. And they're national media that just assume that the Angels aren't good, that just assume that the Angels don't have what it takes to win. We mm -hmm. saw that just recently with a podcast where somebody said, hey, let's get Tim Anderson and let's make a move and grab Tim, Tim Anderson. Angel fans went nuts because they're yeah. like, hold on, time out. Zach Neto's on the team. And yeah. the reason why they were upset about it, John, wasn't because Tim Anderson is bad, although he's having a difficult season. It was just another indication that the national media has no idea what's happening in Anaheim. Right. They we saw truly it in, don't know. We saw it in the WBC. Man, the Angels don't have any pitching. Hey, by the way, who's that Patrick Sandoval guy who's pitching really well <laughs> on Team Mexico, right? And so what I like about this is it's not just Otani chasing the bag. He's going to get the bag. Yeah. This is Otani actually chasing what he wants in his life, and that's a World Series. That's another MVP. That's another Cy Young. But I think Otani is a loyal guy, and I mm -hmm. think Otani wants to – carry the weight of this team 
on his back. And I think that Otani has a lot of similarities that Mike Trout has. And so I, I get it. Longtime Angel fan, I'm your brother. Of course, I'm going to agree with you. We do the show together. But the, the bottom line is I think that you're right in your hot take because this feels like Shohei Otani. This feels like the guy that we've gotten to know since 2018. And this just feels like how the story will play out. I love it. And I feel like Otani will want to make it happen with the Halos. Again, because he loves the, the people on this team. He loves his teammates. And I think that he'll want to take them to the promised land. And I think he's going to bear that responsibility again. Nobody's putting that on him, right. But himself, right. But I think he'll put it on himself and want to be the one to help the halos get there. Locked on angels is brought to you by bird dogs. Bird dogs is a clothing company. That's all about your comfort. We've talked about this on this show before, but John and I recently re received two pairs of shorts from Bird Dogs, and these shorts make us look good and feel good. They're the most comfortable shorts that we have ever put on. And again, we, we look good and we feel good, and that takes a lot of work to get us to look good and feel good. The fabric is stretchy, so it fits you instead of you trying to make it fit. And Bird Dogs give you the freedom to wear a pair of shorts or pants on the golf course, to a meeting, on a date, hanging out with friends. They're casual and comfy and, again, make you look good and feel good. So if you want to be casual, comfy, look good and feel good, and we know you do, then get yourself a pair of Bird Dogs shorts and pants. Here's what you need to do. Go to birddogs.com slash MLB. Use our promo code when you go there to buy the shorts and the pants. Use this code. Locked on MLB. When you do, our friends at Bird Dogs will throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler. That's the one I've been drinking out of on the YouTube YouTube side. I'm showing it. One I've been drinking out of so far on the show. And so I don't spill because you know me and getting old, I spill. Uh, that's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Again, use our promo code locked on MLB. Look good, feel good. Get yourself a pair of pants and shorts from Bird Dogs today. All right, Mike, I gave you my hot take on Shohei Otani. Now it's time for you to give us your hot take. I'm looking forward to it. Hit me. All right, so I, I agree with you. I believe Shohei Otani will re-sign with this team. Okay. I, I don't think that it will happen before the season ends. I think he sure. might do what Aaron Judge did. I think he's yeah. going to test the free agent market, but I think that we will see him back with the Halos. Johnny, I think that he's going to sign – a long-term deal that only looks like a long-term deal. Oh, I actually think he's going to, I think he's going to sign a short-term deal that looks like a long-term deal. I think okay. it's going to be 10, 11 years. Okay. But I think that there's going to be strategic opt-outs in this mm, deal okay. after two years, after four years, after six years. And then after that, I don't think that there'll be any more opt-outs. And here's okay. why if the angels are not competitive or if there's, question marks about ownership management if they're not actually coming through on the promises that they have made and there's been rumors that they made trout a lot of promises and then mm -hmm. trout doesn't have any opt-outs and so he's mm -hmm. stuck here if it doesn't go well right? right i don't think he feels stuck here but it feels like he's stuck here if it doesn't go well because he signed this long-term deal mm -hmm. i think that these opt-outs actually incentivize shohei otani being on the angels long-term hmm. because he gets to see what the angels are going to do. He gets to maybe even participate, give some wisdom to Perry Manassian and mm -hmm. those in the front office on who they should pick up. I think if the angels do what they did this last off season moving forward, I think Shohei Otani would be really excited to be on this team and with mm -hmm. this team mm -hmm. because yes, there were some holes. There's still some holes. There's some things that the Angels needed to do that they didn't do. It'd be great to have Nate Evaldi, Evaldi on our team, right? Like that <laughs> no guy's kidding. pitching like a maniac in, right. in Texas. However, we've seen some of the young guys rise up. And because we didn't sign a shortstop, Zach Neto has been able to come up. And yeah. I think that there's a great future for Zach Neto. That's the most duh statement that I've made on this <laughs> show, right? But I do think that Shohei – signs a long-term deal, but it's really a short-term deal with opt-outs. And I think those opt-outs are at two and at four and at six years. Money-wise, I actually think that because the opt-outs will be included, 
I actually think that the money might be stronger initially, meaning mm-hmm. that he might have 50 million and then maybe another 50 million. And then if he doesn't opt out, there's incentives to not opt out. That next year is 55 million. Okay. 57 million, right? Like it's not going to grow incredibly huge, but I do think that it actually yearly will top out at 60 million. And, and quite honestly, this is just my own personal opinion and, and, you might agree with me, you might not, but the, the sense that I get in my heart is that every time you see any sport and somebody's going to sign, mm-hmm. there's always these ridiculous astronomical numbers that are thrown out there. Mm-hmm. I think Shohei's going to break the record. I just don't think that it's going to be as ridiculous as some of the numbers have indicated. Mm. I just don't think that that's what he's going to sign for. And I think the reason why is because he's going to have some opt-outs. I think that they'll be incentivized years, but over the course of the entire contract, there may be some years where he's only making 30 million or 35 million, something Mm. along those lines. And then on those years before he hits the opt-out, it might be like 50 million, 51 million. Hey, if you don't opt out, then this next year is 55 million and then 35 million. I think that they might lay it out that way. Only Shohei in his, in his, you know, agent know what they're going to do. But I think that this will be a long-term deal that actually, if you tease it back, tear it back, it'll be a short-term deal. And I think that that actually is the wisest way forward for Shohei Otani because he's not stuck. And if he doesn't sign with the angels and he signs with another team, I think he does the same thing with any other team. I don't know if they would do that, But I can see the Angels doing that with Shohei because Hmm. Shohei is being loyal to them. And the Angels were loyal to Shohei. And they said to Shohei, when you come here, you can do both hitting and pitching. And they were the Hmm. only team that was willing to do that. And they were actually the only team willing to take a risk. There's the famous article from Dodgerland that said, whoo, Shohei Otani dodged that bullet, right? Right. And so the Angels have been as loyal as I think that they – are able to be to Shohei sure. Otani. And I think Shohei will resign because of your point. He is loyal, carries the weight. But more specifically, I think the contract details will be very strategic. There'll be opt-outs and he'll be able to check out if the Angels don't come through with the promises that they make him. What do you think? Okay, so let's recap. Something in the realm of 10 to 11 years, yep. opt-outs at year two, four, six, something like that. Maybe in the first two years, each year is worth about $50 million, And then if he doesn't opt out, the money grows exponentially from there. So essentially saying it's a long-term deal, but it has short-term capabilities. Mike, yes. I think you've made a really good decision here in the sense that Shohei Otani's contract is not going to look like anything we've ever seen. I think there's a lot of nuance to it. I think there's a lot of detail that goes into it. I think that you have to make some exceptions. There's got to be some give and take. And I like the give and take that you've put into this theoretical contract. And you're saying it's not going to be your typical 10 years, 500 million, 50 million a year. It's not going to be that. I like the flexibility on the part of both Otani and the Angels if he were to sign this kind of deal. So between my take of he's going to want to come back because he likes this team, he's going to want to finish the story, and then you saying that he's going to have this long-term contract with short-term flexibility, come on, when when do we get to be GM? Let's let's sign up for it. You and I, co-GMs of the Angels. Let's go. Heck yeah. That's why you make Locked on Angels your first listen of the day for brilliant takes. (laughs) <laughs> from Mike and John like that. Hey, remember the Angels play the Red Sox tonight at 638 Pacific time. Uh, you can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Locked on Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. If you're watching on YouTube, comment below. We'd like to get your opinions and thoughts on our Shohei Otani hot takes. And if you're listening on the audio side, come on over to YouTube and comment below the video. We'd love to hear from you as well. Hey, Mike, what do you have on deck for tomorrow's show? John, let's take a look at the schedule. And the Angels have 27 wins as as of this recording. They're playing the Red Sox tonight. After that victory, huh? see what I did there? That means they only need two more wins to get to 30 Mm -hmm. this month, which would be 15 wins and 15 wins each month mean 90 wins total now obviously we might need more than 90 wins so you and i are going to decide 
what games they're going to win over the next week and a half and what games they won't. And we'll figure out where their record will be at the end of May. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow on Locked On Angels. I love doing that guessing game and having those conversations. So we hope that you'll enjoy it as well. All right, friends, that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Angels. My name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Come back and join us tomorrow. We hope to see you there.